Well, we have a restart date for Leeds United season, and that means that we can restart talking about football again, which is great news for everybody. And I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted to say we've got two top guests for you to have a little chat about what's been going on at Leeds United and what's to come for Leeds United as well. We've got two captains of the club, one very famous captain from the past in the form of Lucas Radebe, who I'm delighted to welcome on board, and the current captain, Liam Cooper, who's with us as well. So thanks for joining us, fellas. Look forward to having a chat for the next few minutes about the role of the captaincy, of being captain of such a massive club as Leeds United. Lucas, from your point of view first, is that right up there in terms of your career, that, that, that time you got that captaincy given to you at the football club? You know, uh, uh, Bryn, uh, coming from South Africa and coming from Soweto, that I was never expected. Uh, I think uh, what brought me to the club is the love and the passion of the game. And that's what I did. I've always gone out there in the field and give 100%. But when George gave me that armband, you know, it was extra motivation, extra responsibility. But it, 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 was, it, was, it was greater than that, you know, because I think my role now, you know, as a captain, you know, not only in the field of play, but outside, uh, out the, field of, uh, outside the field of play as well, you know, uh, I've got to make sure that everything that I do, I do it on behalf of the players and, and I get the back uh, 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 the support of all those guys, uh, as you know, we had, we had, we had uh, I think at that time we had Hawkins, David Hawkins, we had, we had, we had, Kel, we had uh, Jimmy Hasselbank, but it, it was great because I think they all supported me and they were all behind me. It was absolutely fantastic too, and, and it was an honor to be made captain of such a great club, like Leeds United with the fans, like that, and the atmosphere of the world. Absolutely amazing. I mean, that's, that's, that really escalated. It really put my career or my value up there, you know, which was, which was brilliant. Yeah, because you went on not only to captain Leeds United, but to captain South Africa at the first World Cup appearance as well. So that, that whole, I mean, people talk about what it's like to walk up the tunnel ahead of an occasion like that. When you did that leading out the South African team, the national team, after everything the country had been through, what sort of sense did that give you? You know, at uh, uh, that time, uh, I think uh, it was a time where it was very critical for the country because we were not just playing football for the lovers at that time. You know, it was, it had an impact politically in the country because it was a time where South Africa was in reconstruction. And, uh, and, 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 you know, to be part of, it was like national service for us. You know, it didn't, uh, at least we didn't have to go to, to war, or, you know, or, or, or to go to, <laughs> to the army. But, but it was national service for everybody. But the timing was right in a way that we had great inspiration uh, in people that we looked up to. I mean, Madiba was one person that inspired the whole country, never mind us as footballers, uh, but the whole country was absolutely amazing. It brought the country together, you know, and the atmosphere was absolutely brilliant. And I think football had a meaning, you know, and it made a huge impact uh, at that point, which I think for me, Having, having played in that era, you know, where we do not just look up to other players or other footballers, you know, for inspiration, but we look up to our leaders and how they lead and how they inspire uh, uh, us, you know, uh, as, as citizens of the country, never mind uh, uh, footballers. And it was such an amazing time. I mean, as you know, that we went on to win the African Cup of Nations, which which was absolutely brilliant. The rugby team won uh, the World Cup 95, which was absolutely fantastic. In a short period of time, you know, that uh, we've, we've been readmitted into international football. We talk about inspirational leaders. Well, Liam, do you feel like the club's had one of those in place for the last couple of seasons, at least whilst you've been the captain there? 
Um, I, I, I hope people believe that. Um, a big one for me is just trying to set, a, set an example and really embrace the role. Um, I, I certainly think I've come into my own over the last couple of couple of years. Um, obviously, Marcelo uh, to, to, to give me the captain captaincy and give me the armband. It was a it, it was an, like, like like Lucas has said. It was a it was a real honour and um, one I really wanted to to take with proud and. Um, hopefully I've done that. Hopefully people can see I've done that. And um, like I said, go back to the start. I want I want to just create an example. I want to be there if if the lads have any any issues. Um, I'm always there. I'm always on the phone. And and yeah, just set an example and, and and be that focal point for the team. Yeah. So you see a role that exists for yourself beyond just being out there and shouting a bit on the pitch, if you like. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, it. it, it Obviously, you you do have your your own your own game to to worry about. But when you are given the armband, you always have a sense of duty to to the rest of the lads as well. Um, to see how they're feeling, to to try and set the example. Um, usually, I try and do that. With, I don't know, uh, getting the lads up for the game before it, um, speaking with the lads, just just little pointers to, to try and help the lads out. And it does go a long way. Um, we're so lucky at the minute. We've we've got a. An unbelievably talented group and um, an unbelievable set of lads as well, and we all want the same 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 thing. We all have the same objectives, and it's to get this club back to to, to the glory days and the great days again, and playing in the top flight. And hopefully, we can do that. And if if we can do that, it'd be it'd be unbelievable. We'd we'd be remembered at this club forever with the likes of Lucas and and the other legends who have been and gone. Um, one thing I will say is that a lot of people do a lot of players pass through, um, but. The ones that I remembered, um, they've obviously had a, an amazing um, process on the club and, and left an unbelievable mark. And, and to, to be remembered in, in that sort of light would be unbelievable. And, and that's what we have in the back of our minds as, as a group and as lads. It's, this is our story and hopefully we can, we can go, remembered, go and be remembered forever. Lucas, when you talked about that dressing room at Leeds that you were in, as you've already said, there were some huge personalities in that room around you. How do you... How do you in that space, how do you kind of manage that? How do you work with that as a captain? Uh, we have different characters, uh, Brie. I, I think uh, listening to, to him there, uh, for me, uh, we, we, we've got similarities because I, I was one of those who lead by example. Uh, you know, who will do everything wholeheartedly and I'll be behind, uh, uh, behind the players 100%. But obviously, coming into the dressing room, I mean, that time the squad, we never had big players or big name players together as such. You know, we had players that wanted to, to do well and, and wanted, mostly wanted to develop into better players, which was very important because, because we know that to get to the level that we want to be, we have to work hard and work as a group. You know, and and, 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 and and for us, that's how it was. Coming into the dressing room, we were chasing Wilkos, we got tubes, you know, characters. It was just a big laugh, you know. And, and obviously, for me, it wasn't about a leader. Uh, we, because I believe that we were all leaders. Yeah. But we, not, we just needed one person that will actually uh, represent the players. And, and for me, it was always exciting coming into the dressing room, you know, uh, seeing Kels, Kelly, Kelly, you know, uh, with his humor and, and having Dukes, having uh, Jason Wilcox. And it was absolutely fantastic because everything came together, you know, at once and, and we became strong as a unit. And not just as footballers, but, you know, we had, we had the cleaners as well, you know, we were getting a lot of weight. And uh, Sean Hardy, you know, was a, mm -hmm. a, a kid manager. I mean, it, it, it was fantastic. And, and for me, it was easy uh, to lead a group uh, like that, that uh, looking forward to winning games, looking, looking to improve every weekend. You know, you, was, we're not, well, you have got one of the biggest, you have one of the biggest smiles I've ever, I've ever come across in football. Sort of, there you go. That's it. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. There, you were always the happiest man I'd ever met from the moment you arrived, basically, at Leeds United. I'm sure you didn't always feel that way because it was a bit tough when you when you first got here. Um, but did you ever have to get angry in the role of captain, or could you do it without ever having recourse to being a bit grumpy? 
No, I, I think every day was different. Uh, Bruno. I think uh, with the weather conditions has been grim. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, coming from Toronto, some days I feel like, Jesus, it's terrible. It's the worst day ever. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, once you get into, into the training club uh, among the players, you know, it all brightens up. And, 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 and uh, yes, there is moment where, you know, uh, especially if, you, if you're losing games, you know, that you're not supposed to lose, you know, and, and you become agitated, you know, becoming... Uh, off a little bit, you know, uh, or, or maybe getting a flag from the manager or from the gaffer and then uh, telling you what, you know, what you're supposed to have done and stuff like that. I think that, you know, those kind of issues because I've never, I was never used to that. So it got into me a little bit, but I think with the support of other players, I think it, it was brilliant. But for me, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to play in the Premier League and, and I wanted to do well for myself, for the club, for everybody concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, taking in consideration that, you know, I come back, I'm not going to live there forever. And you know, uh, 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 not everybody will, will get us an opportunity like this in, in playing for such a great club. I mean, Liam was saying now how the players they came together and, they, but, and that's how it is. I don't know, this club has got that influence, you know, and not just the club, but the city itself, where, you know, you become part of the club, you become part of the family, which is absolutely amazing. Liam, do you have a role that's almost like, I mean, you've got so many guys, it, it, it started really in Lucas's era. Lucas arrived from South Africa, took time to settle in, as he's just talked about there. You have the guys who are coming in from all over Europe and beyond now. Do you have a role on that basis as well in helping them settle in? Yeah, I only I only, I put myself in their situation to be honest, and 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 how difficult it must be coming from another country. Um, some lads are um, different language. It must be so difficult. And yeah, I like to put myself in their shoes and what I would what I would reach out and what I would want want to look for. Um, so yeah, like if, if any new signing comes in, I'll, I'll try and get the numbers straight away and, and just give them a message just to sort of break the ice. And, and if they need anything, I'm always here if they need to get in touch. And, and I think that's the way it's got to be. Um, like, like Lucas said, you, you come into Leeds United and it is one big family from the fans to the lads to the staff. It, it is one big family. And I, I think um, I've been at clubs before where it's not like that and it, it, it's hard, it, it can be difficult and, and change rooms can, can get a bit to toxic and that's not, it's not what it's meant to be. Um, and honestly, uh, I definitely say since, since Andreas came in that the, the club has just gone from, from one place to another. Um, just just everything, um, the training ground, the stadium, everything, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Um, it's, and, and everybody has the same goal and the, and the same aspirations um, to, to get this club to, to where it belongs. And, and it's, it's been a slow process, but one, obviously, that we're, we're on the cusp of now and hopefully we can do that and, and take it to the next level again. Yeah, because Lucas had all sorts of challenges through his career. We've talked about World Cups, African Cup of Nations, Champions League football with Leeds United, Premier League football on a regular basis. But your challenge is... Well, it's twofold and it's massive on both aspects of that. One is to get this club back into the top division, which people have been trying to do for years and failing at. But now on top of that, you've had this new challenge where the season was all going so well, seven points clear at the top, nine games to go, and then everything just stopped. How have you dealt with that challenge? It's been tough. It has been really tough. I, I won't lie to you. You have a lot of time to reflect. Um Luckily, coming into coming into the lockdown, we'd, we'd won five games on the bounce and we, we was flying. Uh, it came at a, a horrible time for us. Um, but you do, you have a lot of time to sit down and reflect on, on what we've done and what we can do to, to be better and, and to go finish the job. And we've had that time. Um, we've, we've trained hard. Um, and, and in these times, that's all you can do. You, that's when you, I think your, your professional side really comes out. At the end of the day, we're, we're athletes. Um, and there is going, there was always going to be a time when this had to resume, and we had to be ready. And the lads have been different class in that aspect. That they've all stuck to it. Um, obviously, I spoke to you just off air a minute ago, but the, the lads are in such such good shape. Um, we've we've come back into contact training uh, today was the first day, and 
the lads are flying. I was so surprised at the the sharpness of the session and, and the fitness levels of the lads. And that proves to me that everybody has listened. Everybody is thinking like me and 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 does has the same does have the same um, dreams as me. Um, I, we want to get this club to to the Premier League, and 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 that has been the objective ever since I came to this club. Um, a lot of teams have tried and a lot of teams have failed, and we, we've put ourselves in an unbelievable position to to go and deliver on 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 those dreams.